He is coming on, and there's Tim. It's super good, super good. Hey, Lisa. Uh, we take people from our audience and uh, and put them into panelists, and we are taking on lots of panelists these days because we're actually going to do a deep dive into safety versus comfort today, and that's the the big deal that this is all about. I've been doing a number of different things with. Uh, uh, different profiling and coaching bits on the Blair Dunkley experience and sure enough it's been great so Jamie if you would love to come on I'd love to have you on um, I know you're around there and Jamie just wrote raised her hand and she's uh, uh, didn't take a, a second to get her back and interested in on so that was super huge uh, hey there hey, I don't know what happened to uh, to Brent, he was briefly here and now he's disappeared. Uh, thank you, sir. Adam, I will be uh, on in just a few getting my son to sleep. No problem, Adam. Uh, that's super. And Brent is back and now uh, Tim left. <laughs> Sorry, Blair. No, no worries. I was got... eating, so I didn't want to make any noise or. No. Oh, that's just okay. fine. That's just fine. We get, we're playing musical chairs with everybody. Lisa, Rebecca, if you guys want to jump on, no problem with that. Um, you know, Adam is going to be on in a few minutes here, but let's get started. So let's dig in. Let's start doing it. So who would like to share about what their understanding of safety versus comfort? Because I know that everybody but maybe Brent has definitely done it, but and Brent is a probable or a likely suspect. Uh, okay. Do you know anything about safety versus comfort, Brent? Well, I've heard it several times, that's for sure, at the okay. workshops and, and the first time. Cool. So, physical safety as a, like, uh, safety is like physical safety, yep. like a, out of harm's way. That's and right. It's more of an in, internal and, uh, and emotional uh, state. That's perfect. <laughs> okay, so what happens... With that, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good um, overview piece. So it's clear. That's straightforward. And that is a clear piece. So no problem there. Um, and that's super. Okay, we, we do have movement on the other side. Sorry. Um, just was wondering um, about my Facebook Live page. And it seems to be uh, going live. And there is uh people there so that's super thanks so much um yeah and i think brandy is out there on facebook live so that's awesome that's totally a big deal so uh, thank you very much brandy for coming on and taking a look at this i'm just trying to adjust my screen somewhat sorry for the fiddling here but i'm just trying to reposition it so i can see the um engagement stuff happening on Facebook Live because I love you guys on Facebook. I love you on uh, Zoom here with everybody. And Chris, hi there. Uh, glad you could make it. So we've got Chris's on there as well. That's certainly super huge. So uh, that's just tremendous that you guys could be coming on here. Uh, love it. Um, so Chris, and uh, Brandy are on board, and there's other people joining. So we'll just keep on going with this. If you guys have stuff, I will look from time to time in the comments. So I will be looking over there and attempting to be more responsive to the Facebook um, uh, texting or comments. Uh, please feel free to place your comments in there in Facebook because I'm doing double duty. Uh, tonight and those of you that have other comments as panelists, please absolutely feel free to jump on here and uh, and chat in the chat box as well and uh, you know do what you need to do. Anyway, deep dive into safety versus comfort. So safety versus comfort. Um, Brent nailed it when he was in the shot. Sorry, he's popping in and out having dinner and not wanting to eat on on uh, camera, but he's doing his thing and I don't blame him um, for that at all. So that whole piece of safety versus comfort, safety being that piece that's physical and 
the comfort being the piece that's more emotional. Now, a lot of people blend safety versus comfort. But what does that do at the end of the day? You know, um, I've got a, um, a thing, the five key human or five key drivers of human nature. And one of these is, you know, people need to stay safe. Well, we do. We have to survive. So we need to say, stay safe. But we also want to stay comfortable. I mean, we tend to not move. Um, we tend to just, when we're comfortable, um, what's that law um, out there? It's a law of physics. Uh, an object in motion stays, has a tendency to stay in motion, and an object at rest tends to stay at rest. So if you actually are at rest, you tend to just stay there. But if you're active and doing things, you'll tend to get active and stay active with things. So that's huge. So actually very huge. Um, the reality of the situation is those models of human behavior often trap us in our stuck state. And they're the thing that helps us and hinders us simultaneously for moving to that next level in our business. Um, can anybody of the panelists relate to any part of that? You guys relate to that? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Cool. For sure. You yeah. spoke first and you don't speak often, so jump in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Who, I can definitely. Oh, John. No, uh, Tim. Tim. Oh, Tim. Oh. Tim. Yes, Tim. Tim spoke up, so he's in. Tim. I can definitely relate to that. Uh, you know, before uh, learning the mind model safety versus comfort, I was blending the two. And I, I was confusing myself and not allowing myself to effectively uh, risk because, you know, I, I wasn't understanding it. My mind was blending the two and I wasn't, um, how do I put it? I wasn't uh, trying to think how to word it. I wasn't effectively, like, I, I guess my mind, I, I would not allow myself to do something because I felt like I was unsafe when really it was just an uncomfortable situation. Right. So... I wasn't effectively allowing myself to risk in certain areas of my life because I was confused as to um, what the, re you know, what that really was. Absolutely. Was bringing up different emotions that didn't need to be there, I guess. He wouldn't risk because he was afraid of the judgment. <laughs> uh, yes, your wife knows you well. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> Absolutely true. And did you notice uh, that one, which word about Re what Rebecca shared, because she captured it a little bit tighter and more succinctly. So uh, yay, Rebecca. Yes, from Jamie. Totally love it. But um, so um, what actually happened there with that judgment piece? What would you do, Brett, uh, Tim? What would you well, do? I, I was, I was judging myself and beating myself up and not allowing myself to, um, to risk, I mean, to, to, you know, step outside of my comfort zone and to, because I was worried that others would judge me or I was worried, you know, I, but I got to admit, I was beating myself up and judging myself a lot more than anybody else was. And that's the thing that I had to realize. Yep. Keep going. Um, the, I, I mean, and the, the issue is, is I was always afraid that others were judging me. Always afraid that if I said something wrong or did something wrong, that others would look at me funny. And I, I had a hard time handling that. Um, and it's kind of like the whole, you know, 97% of the things that we worry about don't actually happen. Yep. The thing that I had to realize and get through my own mind was that uh, most of the time where I felt like I was being judged by others, I actually wasn't. And it was just my internal battle in my own head. It was, it was me that was the issue, not 
everybody else. Um, that is so, so, so true. One of the huge pieces. Hey, Sarah Lynn, glad you could join us tonight. Um, very, very cool. Um, if you would like to, you can jump on as a panelist. All you have to do is raise your hand and I will promote you uh, as a panelist and you can come on here and share your stuff because this one is one of the ones yourself and uh, Katrina, I believe it was. I did some profiling not that long ago with Katrina. The other day, she I profiled her before, but this area was super huge for Katrina. She would be doing what you described there. Um, however, uh, really, really focused on keeping herself safe, and that safety was just because she was uncomfortable to take the actions. And when I made her didn't make her do anything when i when i profiled her she had a discovery and that discovery was that she is stuck and that stuck state of hers was stuck in a marriage she didn't want to be in stuck in uh in uh how she thought how she viewed herself you know like Think about this in terms of what kind of things are we holding ourselves um, stuck in that because we have this, this sensation that it's going to be too risky for us. And what if I don't, what if I do this for myself? I mean, it's so much easier. I, I have worked with a few people the, since, this last week since the last um, the Blair Dunkley experience. And the interesting thing that I found is that these individuals, for the most part, are all stuck at different levels of taking risk. And what's the underpinning of taking risk? The need to stay safe and or comfortable. And that's what this, you know, um, driver of human nature calls out to us to do is stay safe, even though we need to be uncomfortable. And people will avoid an uncomfortable state if they feel attacked or unsafe in any way. But if that is an emotional attack or if that is a verbal attack, they feel unsafe. Well, it's, it's strong, it's firm, it's whatever. It can, it can be emotionally draining. It can be emotionally threatening to you. But are you unsafe yet? And no. the short answer is not yet. It could be verging on it because I've seen, I've actually worked with battered women, a lot of people who are both abusers and the abused, uh, mostly abused and the abusers a little less. Um, but the issue here is the safety is builds up to an unsafe uh, crescendo where physical abuse occurs, and it is unsafe. But the average woman, well, there was a study done quite a few years ago now in the Edmonton area by one of our our shelters, our women's shelter. And the women's shelter literally said, like on their study, it was they had uh, 30, uh, a woman that comes into their shelter has on average 32 uh, abuse scenario beatings in short, and three life threatening hospitalizations before they leave their husband. That's the average. That is scary because when you are faced with actual violence and in a real unsafe place, people know how to handle the pain of that beating, of that physical abuse, more so than they're prepared to face the unknown. And the fear of the unknown of what is actually going to happen to them once they leave is more terrifying for people, these women in particular, 
than staying in a physically abusive scenario of physical and mental abuse. However, this is the point. Once you get past that, and I don't know the kind of relationship that Katrina was in. All that I do know is that she announced to everybody on Facebook and in this group that she was she's left her husband. And so she's now got a, is filing for a divorce and becoming divorced in one way, shape, or form or another. So the relationship was not working for her. That's not necessarily an abusive situation. I don't know whether it was or wasn't. It didn't appear to me to be, but I don't know. I'm not trying to make a statement one way or the other. All I do know is that when I first met her, she was in a scenario where she was playing a very small game. And her game has expanded. But her motivation for going out there and building her business, her online business, was to retire her husband. Now they're not together. Then she was gapped out. Like, what do I do now? So what's missing, guys? What's missing? I've just given you the story. So what's missing? So Jamie, John, Brent, Tim, Dwayne, what's missing? Anybody can jump in who's got an idea for Katrina. Her sense of caring for herself. Uh, she wasn't even, you know, the, the obvious answer there was, I need to survive. But, you know, she, she doesn't have the, the dream to retire her husband. So it didn't, she didn't immediately switch to take care of me. It was, it was an emptiness there. It wasn't there. That's correct. What else is missing? What else is missing? Self-confidence. To some degree, your self-confidence was coming back, but was it there to the degree that it needed to be? Short answer, no. So some self-confidence was missing. What else? And focus this around safety versus comfort. Just, if you can. Based off of comfort, she's no longer in a comfort zone. She was used to the, with her husband, it was a zone she was in with comfortable, whether it was safe or not, she was comfortable with it. More right. Hey, un that unknown now that is, it's, it's a new stage. And she, it's an unknown. She doesn't know what's going to happen. Absolutely. You just hit the nail on the head of a big thing. So, you know, safety, safety, whether or not you're safe or not, doesn't matter because you're comfortable with the known. Mm -hmm. And that emotional comfort with the known is such a big deal for so many people that it is, it's a core driver in so many ways, that this core driver helps engage people to stay stuck. It's a negative stuck state. Like it, it seems like, okay, I'm comfortable, it's okay. But comfort stops learning. Comfort. Well-known saying about that, Blair, is something the devil you know is better than the one you don't. Absolutely true. And so-, so justification that, of that stuck state. That's right. That's absolutely true. And it's a big deal. This, the, this is the thing that causes us to get locked into a scenario where it does not work for us. And yet, how many times do we stay with the devil we, what we know? In spite of. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Okay. With that said, let's now start exploring what do we need to do to start getting out of these situations? What might we do differently? Jamie, what, do you might, what might you do differently? Well, um, I was just reading something that talks about how your body remembers and feels even before your brain does, so it kind of reacts. You know, so you have those... Um, whether you get flushed or whether you start crying or whether whatever, your butt, your chest gets tight. And so I realized that that really is very true. It's like it's it, it, your body's remembering. And then it's, and so if you can kind of, what I've been trying to do is, is notice what my body's doing before I even, you know, don't do something or get right. upset about something or, 
react to something if if it's starting to feel uncomfortable or whatever that is mm -hmm. and breathe kind of breathe through that and take a few minutes to then push through that and go toward the fear whatever that fear was um what does that fear turn into have you gotten that far yet well it the if i don't do it the fear keeps me stuck so hold it. Uh, when you get into that body memory, because this is some of the stuff we used to deal with at Life Skills Colleges uh, when I did coach training, and this is one of the coping strategies. Mm -hmm. So the body has uh, you can you probably heard of muscle memory, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we also have cellular memory, mm -hmm. where the cell retains knowledge information. Right. And we have different parts of our body are, you know, the area of like the comment of a broken heart, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, butterflies in the stomach and weak in the knee. All of these are neuro, neurological symptoms that are external from the brain. These areas of the body have neuron-like cells in them so that they generate um, information and the cell structure the the actual uh, membrane of the cell is thought to be uh, able to store memory and actually a surprisingly large amount of memory in it at a at a sort of sub um, subconscious or near conscious level and the more that you're in touch with your body the more that your body and mind communicate so it's that mind body awareness that, and that connection so as you're going through that, Jamie, mm -hmm. try and shorten down that time frame. So what might you be able to do to say, okay, what are you aware of when, when you start getting that sensation in your body where there's a tightness in your chest or something along that line? When, what are you linking that to? Now, to be blunt with you, most people ignore these kinds of subtle information patterns, but they're well, real. Well, no, I know. And, and it's interesting because I knew they were there, but yep. until I really started reading about it, I just kind of, for example, one of the things that I do and I always have is I and never know when it's going to happen and not even sure why sometimes is that I'll flush, you know, I'll get really flushed. Mm -hmm. And so I always thought, well, I'm not nervous because there'll be times when I'm, I don't think I'm nervous, you know, I'm not, but there's something in my body that is causing me to react that way. So in that moment, mm -hmm. as opposed to going, because the way that you chose to evaluate that mm -hmm. was to look for conscious, um, logical explanations. Mm-hmm. The, the suggestion that I would have is if you go to the emotional sensation and what are you feeling, and when you say you're feeling flushed, what is that emotional reaction relating to? What do you feel that it's about? Well, I think it is, um, I'm working, and I just kind of started this, but I'm working through it and, and really getting to the point that I do do you remember the story a few when I was on a couple times ago and I just lost it? Yeah. <laughs> somebody had questioned my integrity. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, and, and so I, I realized that sometimes I don't, I, I'm afraid of being wrong because I've been so used to being the strong one or right so much. And so, and having to be vulnerable about being wrong. And right. or being so that's a that's something that I'm having to really get used to, <clears throat> and not being wrong, but I mean being okay with not always being the one that has the answers. Right now, if you back up, when I asked you to describe your feeling, you went into I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to share with you, that's again part of that logical connection. So if you wish to explore that even more deeply, at a at a um, 
an equal but different way of doing it because we have our cognitive selves our our thinking our rational brain but we also have our heart and our emotional selves mm -hmm. and pulling those two together because quite often the emotional side will come through in that flush in that body sensation that is usually associated with some kind of emotional response Mm -hmm. And so people get flushed when they get a, have an emotional response. So the first place to go is to go to the emotional side, not necessarily the, the I think side. So if you're hearing yourself say, which we all did here this time, I think, um, you might want to go, so what am I actually feeling? And figure out the emotional side. Because really what it's coming down to is that emotional side and goes back to that comfort and are we staying comfortable in spite of our desire to look at something different or well, not look at something different right and i think that well not think i know um that when um <laughs> as growing up or even now emotion is tough for me yes it's it is fair. and so to get to even try to name it or or get okay with having it is is what i'm really working through now um yes. trying to get in touch with that because i've always worn that armor um whether it was because i moved every two years of my life and had to just to kind of survive you know that constant change yes uh, and unknowing or what and so I've always been the tough one and I've always kind of really held my emotions close where people think I, you know, are you real? Do you really, <laughs> do you bleed? Do you, you know, bleed? Like the rest of us? Right. Or are and, you Vulcan and, and bleed green blood, you know? Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And so I, um, and I, and I think I've always looked at it as being weak. And so so those emotions come up going, no, I can't do that. And so it's been, a, it's been a real learning experience for me to push through. And especially with all the online training and stuff where I am so outside my knowledge base um, in the technical aspect is to grab a hold of that and, and be okay with, with certain things. Um, so, but that was, it's, it's, it's been a uh, real good learning experience. That's a, you know, that's a really good thing to start uh, focusing in on. And, um, you know, the learning experience of this is a useful tool. But again, going back to the deep dive in safety versus comfort, when you're in something that you don't know how to do, what, what is anybody? Uh, actually, I'm going to pick on Dwayne. Do you have a default mechanism? Do you know of a default piece that you can start engaging to explore that emotional side uh, more easily? Do I know which default mechanism I use or what one you should use? Well, ones that I actually not even should use, but one that is effective. He doesn't like the word should. Yeah. I don't want to shit on people here. <laughs> well, I don't know, actually. I guess I'm stumped on this one. That's okay. That's just fine. Uh, John, and I, I'm just going to go around. And so um, Jamie has done hers. Dwayne, where are you? And John, you're up next. And then Connie, and then Brent, and then Tim. Okay. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. Well, I think that one of the things that, that uh, I need to work on is if box A looks scary to me and then I encounter box B, I start to associate the scary because box B looks like box A. Yep. And we've got a tool that I'm, I'm trying to work through right now and pull I want to see where people are. That is a perfect description, Dwayne, of how lots of people actually make things happen in their brain. That so, is interesting because I run to box B then. Yeah. <laughs> so versus making it the same. 
Absolutely. So, and, and one of the things that uh, Chris says on Facebook is breathing works. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, look down and focus on yourself. Um, get into contact with your emotions. Uh, yes, but we're going to do that a specific way here because sometimes it will overwhelm, Chris, it will overwhelm that person to get in, in touch with their feelings. And I'd like to give you guys a relatively, yeah, I know, <laughs> Jamie, I want to give you a relatively safe model here so that even if you're by yourself and you do that, you, don't, you won't need a lot of guidance to get out of it because it's going to be relatively safe. Okay, John, you're up. John and Connie. Okay. Um, I think, I think, no. <laughs> Sorry. First question, it's, it's getting curious. What am I feeling? And, and the first question has to be, am I safe? And, and kind of that's the baseline because it's drawing that line between safety and comfort. And if, I'm, if my physical threat, safety is not threatened, then it's, okay, what am I feeling and where's it coming from? Uh, the Tim? tendency is to go to why. Why is this happening? And, you know, that's the, I think, the, so that needs to be redirected into what is happening. Exactly. Uh, Connie, anything to build on that? Well, just learning to take that concept and figure out what the hell it is. You know, what, what, what that feeling is, what that name and label it. And, and that's a big one for me because I tend to kind of, you know, bull in a china shop. I want to get from point A to B. Yep. And I don't care about the little steps in between. Right. Because so I'm going to pull out the back. Right. And so so it's, it's stopping long enough and taking that, that time to say, you know, what is, what is going on? Yeah, no, okay. that's good. Because that's exactly what I've been trying to do. Because I'm with you. I kind of go A to B. I mean, go out, just pull, go push through it. Right. And um, instead, I'm now starting to take it in baby steps, which is super hard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and go through the, is it effective, um, you know, name and label, all the things that I'm learning here in those baby steps, but it, it is hard. You know, baby steps are effective. One of the things that they tend to be is we can habituate to those baby steps pretty quickly because we've got the, the size in our mind already of a baby step and we hold that size there. And one of the things that I encourage people to do relatively quickly after they've done the first two or three of the baby steps is to switch over to naming it, labeling it as chunking it down. Mm -hmm. So breaking it into chunks, because the size of the chunks can be different than baby steps. Just sharing, you know, because yeah. well, you want to go faster. And one of the things that I've seen people who have that bull in the china shop mentality that have to plow through everything and get there first and get there fastest and just do it. And it may not even be first. It's just faster than I've ever done it before they want to break it down and plow through and they get frustrated because they're still overthinking the baby step. Okay. So we want to not do that. So what we want to do is flip it into chunking down. So what is it that I might do? And if you can't do that, then you haven't chunked it down far enough yet. And you haven't gone after what's the key word here, Jamie? What do you have to, what emotion do you have to engage with your brain to help you chunk it down? John said it right up front. He said it right up front. And it's the C word. I'll give you that. An emotion? Mine's it actually control. is. Nope. <laughs> I look at that as an emotion. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> However, by the way, folks, just so that you know, um, you, you, most everybody here probably figured that one out or retained that information because it's not a major barrier or block. If you didn't retain what John said, your brain didn't hear it, although it was said. And, <clears throat> and that's normal because we have to go through you know, seven, eight, nine, ten repetitions before the brain will 
actually acquire the information. Okay, so Tim, what's the magic word? Curiosity. Right, curiosity. And you feel curious. Okay, so when you start doing this, curiosity is that critical piece. And that critical piece is there as curiosity for a number of, I like, I want to inject curiosity into the system. So Jamie, um, we're sort of gonna work on you because you basically said this is a bit of a gap for you. This is an area that you'd like to improve, right? Okay, great. So let's, let's pick on you a little bit here. Uh, work. Okay, it's what I get for not coming for a little while. That's right, that's right, you get picked on now. Okay. Folks, I was ready. Yeah, good. You've recovered. <laughs> Okay, just kidding. I don't do it that bad. It wasn't that bad, folks. You know, like, seriously, it wasn't no. that bad. Okay, but the, here's the piece, is that when you engage, um, first of all, think about this in a way of thinking about the issue that you have and then put in, hey, I'm going to be curious. I want to feel curious about this. Okay. And, and if you can get into that state and then inject curiosity, I'd like to know what happens. Okay. Ooh. That's what happened? One. My chest got tight. <laughs> okay. In what way, shape, or form? Um, so now get curious about that. Yeah, uh, I, I really, I am very curious on what causes me to put up such a wall. Um, you know, I, and I can only keep, I can only go back to the lifestyle that I had for those, it was a military background, moving yep. and stuff. Um, and the change and the f maybe the fear of that, but not being able to show fear because you don't have a choice. <laughs> it's kind of, you had to do it. Um, and so, and I always projected leadership, you know, took control over, you know, never met a stranger, took control, whether I felt it or not. It was just that, as Connie said, kind of plowing through. You just kind of, back, you used to say, fake it till you make it. So. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the key things here is, John just posted here, is that a disguised why? And to a certain degree, it is. Now, the, the, um, the curiosity piece is not, um, is not a disguised why, it's taking a look at what it is. Now, this is technically not a full, fully disguised why, and a disguised why is, I'll just explain this one. Your yeah, answer, Jamie, was a blend between a why and a what. So it was a what why, actually. It's what happened, but why it actually, what was the, what caused it to happen, but it's interpreted as a why it happened to you, okay? Okay. As opposed to if you could get really curious and go, okay, those, all of those things happened to you. So what might you take from that? What is those things that you can take? Um, and by the way, Rebecca, I want to comment on, on your post here. Pulling yourself out of the past loop with curiosity so that you can take an action in the now to move. And that's really what we're trying to do. So you, you got everything from the past there, Jamie. And what I'd like you to do is start working with that present piece and the present curiosity. So how can you actually find the movement from that? And especially your chest tightened a little bit right now. So yeah. it, I, I, I will it, say that I think I have been doing that. I think I think you have too. So fill, fill me in. Right. I think that um, because I don't like staying in the past and I, and I realized that some of this was from the past, it was keeping me stuck. 
I have been um, reading more and, and trying to get into a present action steps, right? And taking right. action. And instead of being afraid of the unknown of technology or whatever, is still doing that. And, and for the first time, I think reaching out, Rebecca and Tim are, and John and Will and Dwayne are all good examples of um, being stuck and being able to ask for help and saying, hey, I can't do this. And that's a huge thing for me just to go ask for help. So, um, and I started a community in a, a group community that celebrates people where they are right now and moving them forward from right now and it's 14 days old and we're already changing lives and so i'm extremely excited about that and key and it's helping i think me um because i'm great at telling others what to do but it's also being the leader of this group it's helping me have to do it with them and um and practice what I preach, I guess what you're saying. Yep. Um, so I am doing it, but I realize that I, um, and the interesting thing is, is I don't flush hardly at all anymore, which is so exciting. Super. I, I, I concur with that. Um, you know, one of the things here on the Facebook, uh, you know, I love having Facebook open while I'm doing this because other people I'm getting in, input from others. And Chris said, again, another uh, why question mark. And I go, it is why. You know, that's why. Now, it is also a what why. It's not a why why. It's a what why. So you're, you're moving yourself between the two. But now it's to the, that you can shift yourself more to the present rather than past to like you need to be able to not need to if you want to utilize more of the curiosity mm -hmm. i'd suggest that you use it more in the present rather than relating it back as the the, the, the yeah to the past and bringing no, it forward. now uh sherry also um, just stay like put in three letters, I, B, R, you know, and that is intention, behavior, result. And right. so that the I, B, R piece is also huge and it's a great place to get in touch and to start working through, uh, the intention, behavior, result. Um, we don't have time to go into that because that's a, a big discussion, but you know, the, the focus here is to move you forward. If you can start taking a look at where are you with your comfort on moving yourself forward. So evaluating your ability to be comfortable and you started doing some of that, like in your group, is that you being uncomfortable or becoming more comfortable? It's becoming more comfortable. And uh, no, as far as, no, no, I stay uncomfortable. I have, um, in the sense of, I think that I need to stay, you know, one of my things is you have to get used to being uncomfortable, be uncomfortable or be comfortable being uncomfortable. Right. Okay. Um, Two seconds. So, what is that? When you get to, uh, you know, you're uncomfortable, but you're comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. what, what have you activated in your brain? I have activated. Um, what emotion have you activated? I gotta, I gotta learn names of emotion. That's yeah, you do. And I, you know what? I, I do. One of the one of the key things that we do. Geez, I had it. I didn't bring that out of storage. What I had was back in the day, one of our coaches who was a graphic artist did up this sheet of faces, and you can find oh, it on. I might have it. On Facebook. Tell me if I can use it. Uh, I had it for my daughter when she was younger. Maybe I need to use it for myself. I think it wouldn't hurt. You know, um, honestly, it really wouldn't hurt. Uh, I will, if I, yeah, I'll, I don't, I think it's around here, but I won't spend the time looking for it. But it has, it, I was, um, yeah, I, I guess that it was a sheet because I was going to bring it out to try to see because we used to have her. Um, are those, is that the faces that are all circles? There, well, it's in, a, it's, in a, 
it's in a squares and then yeah. they're all, they're all different um, emotions and you pick which one. Yeah, so exactly. Young, well, yeah. younger, we would ask her because she yeah. would say, well, I'm fine or I'm this. And I go, okay, yeah. let's try to get a little deeper than that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, again, it was me teaching versus doing. And exactly. so I know what to teach. <laughs> I teach it a lot, but yeah. It's the doing part that it's about getting congruent with it so that you can actually role model it effectively. Mm -hmm. And the role modeling is a big deal. Um, one of the issues here is that the, what you're doing when you're, when you're bridging the gap between being um, comfortable with being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you actually are engaging curiosity. Oh, and that's okay. a big deal because okay. you've got to be curious to bridge that gap. Because otherwise, you go, I will shut down part of my curiosity and just survive this because I'm uncomfortable, but I'll figure out how to be comfortable by usually ignoring and not holding the information fully important. That but if you're fully open to that experience, you will get curious. Got it. That makes and, total and, sense. And when you get conscious about your level of curiosity, the flushing tends to go away. Because flushing is not a behavior that the body associates with curiosity. People don't flush when they're curious. Mm -hmm. They actually, their blood doesn't go to their face, doesn't show embarrassment, doesn't show, you know, um, shock or surprise or anything it goes curiosity starts going and causing the brain to engage emotively and it's it's a very nice tie-in to get a head heart connection between the two and what you wind up doing is get becoming congruent around the fact that you're both you know um you're curious but you can be fearful and curious you can be uh intimidated and curious you can be wonderstruck and curious you can be in awe and curious all of those things can be paired up together so that you can start taking a look at how you're moving through a state of curiosity and so go ahead so, so when i come up with that feeling that i'm getting and i'm trying to figure this out uh to to get a, my head around it do i look at that do i take that sheet until I get a little more familiar with that and try to pick my own emotion and then go, okay, and be curious about that emotion on why, not why, but what's, what's going on. Yeah. Because one of the things that you are doing in terms of language here, um, I would really encourage, I got to get more content out, but um, you know, one of the key things that we are going to be going through is the question concepts in, um, so yeah, um, unfortunately, that's going to be in Mind Model Coach training. Um, I'm looking at developing another product that has um, question concepts in it. And is that then, the one you found the tapes on? Yes, that is the one that I found the tapes on. So yeah, I'm trying to, trying to build on that. Um, however, the, that whole piece of that level of, of curiosity into the emotion of it when you start going through the emotion of it if you can work at naming and labeling the emotion okay. rather than describing why you have it okay so when um chris was saying uh again another why question mark and i gave her a thumbs up because this is on facebook by the way because she nailed it on hearing your language pattern and going, right, she's giving us why she is having that feeling, not what the emotion is. Okay. No, that, and thanks. Cause that's what I'm working on. That's the yes. whole thing I've been trying to work on. So totally. And, and okay. that's where the difference starts coming in because the more that we can start naming and labeling what the emotion is, we don't have to feel the emotion we just have to remember the emotion. And this is the differentiation between reliving and remembering. Mm -hmm. And that's how come this whole deep dive into safety versus comfort, because the deep dive here is pairing, you know, remembering and reliving with safety versus comfort. 
because if you're remembering we it, everything's safe and you can explore it and you can do it because it's a memory it's happened to you but if you're reliving you're not safe you're not comfortable yet you should be comfortable but you're not and you're not safe so what you do is you amplify your discomfort and rename that discomfort into panic, fear, whatever it is, or whatever emotion that you had back then, and it tends to amplify it. And we get fish stories out of it, like they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, there's lots of issues that come out of that. So we've got to be aware of what's going on with us so that we can be listen with intent to other people so we don't wind up helping people amplify their problem yeah, right and so that's yeah. one of the things that i i sharing feels fine in the moment because you get a sense of being understood what doesn't happen though is you don't get release you get understood and being understood can amplify the remembering because you're getting a positive reward for a negative situation, which causes the body, the brain, everything, you to keep going after. Right, I tell my story and people appreciate my story. I tell my story, I cry more, I feel, I share more emotion, I share and it, and it hurts and I'm in my pain and I can share my story and I get rewarded for my story. Well, it doesn't help your life. So okay. what happens though? Go ahead that you share your story and where a lot of people do, they show those emotions and they get, go through it. But what happens when you don't? Cause I can share my story and I'm. And, and I that's don't. that it <laughs> depends whether or not you're doing it through reliving it or remembering it. If you're remembering your story and you share the story, then there is a lesson usually in it for that. But if you share your story and you're crying and people are and seeking sympathy and sharing that whole thing, then uh, that's a different thing. Now, some people can blend the emotional recount, but more as a recollection that is filled with emotion. And it's a blended remembering, reliving scenario ending on remembering. And they have the shift that's where that power piece is because then okay. it, it, it draws people in to the scenario where they see a shift that has happened and that has occurred. Well, it's, it's part of also with all the online things that, you know, stories are so important, right? They are. Right? And for me, because I just do not get emotional very often. Mm -hmm. um, and that, doesn't come across. So I'm having to work on just how do you tell a story when you aren't, con <laughs> you just, because people will tell me things that I'm thinking, okay, somebody sent me a message today and said, oh, I got ghosted on Facebook. I guess that, I didn't know what that was, but I guess it's you get um, unfriended without a no notice. And she goes, and I'm almost in tears. And my first reaction is, and <laughs> well, why would, you know? Well, first of all, yeah, but you're going into your why rather than what is the issue for that person? Because right. And that, that's what I'm saying. So I'm having to, tr I have to, empathy is, is something that I'm having to really work. learn. Yes. And, and it does not come natural to me. Like some people it does. And so, um, it, can you, so I, and I think that's an, a good thing to learn it. <laughs> if you're working with people, it's absolutely essential. But one of the ways to start learning that is to whip out that sheet and start practicing associating emotions, like appropriate emotions with that sense of self. Right. Okay. okay yeah. So that's, I'm working on it. And then one of the things, if you get good at that for yourself, then can you hear other people's emotions? Can you describe their feelings for them? Because it sounds to me like you are concerned that you may not have 
enough empathy, care and concern showing for the other person because you're sort of going, and? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and I do, and I'm a, a giver and I, yes, you I, give are. A lot. I do all of that, but I just, um, and part of me, I'm glad, I, I guess I said, thank you God for not giving me the mercy bone or mercy gift because people live it. And I don't want to, I don't, I want to be able to help and empathize, but not own it where a lot of people own it and get all involved. Now, in okay, first of all, there's a big difference between sympathy yeah. and empathy. Right. And those people tend to go into sympathetic mode rather than empathetic mode. Yeah. I want empathy. Um, and when I'm working with people, I want not, we train people to have empathy. That means I can understand what it is, but I don't take on your load. Right. Okay. So I I just want, I, I'm wanting to learn a little more empathy right because if you're sympathetic then you're feeling their feelings with them i'm not that okay good not at all <laughs> excellent because that's not what <laughs> i here, rebecca, stop laughing it's not I yeah it's <laughs> sorry what rebecca i say i love you jamie <laughs> yeah exactly so so it works in a way where engagement actually starts becoming empathetic and you can appreciate somebody else's emotion without taking it on. Right. Okay. So that's, that's really important for us to get clear. Um, pardon me. You'll wind up burning yourself out if you are sympathetic, sympathetic but you can do decades of training and coaching and uh, helping people. Um, without burning out, if you are empathetic, mm -hmm. and they can relate to you and you can relate with them. So nothing goes sideways. So sympathy, not so much. Empathy, a whole lot. Yes, do empathy. Okay, okay. great. So um, what's been working for you so far? Jamie, I want to wrap you up. What's worked for you so far? Um, I think, well, the mind models are, are I, I cannot wait to get more into the mind models. And I'm, I'm so bummed right now that I can't go to the coaching, but I will get there. Um, and I, I think just, I think the curiosity piece, I love that, that you added that because I think that's what I was missing. Um, so I think being curious and by the and, way, I, I want, can I build on that for a second? That curiosity sure. piece that was missing. I, I so get it, but I want to position this in terms of what we're doing here tonight. And we're going through a deep dive into safety versus comfort. Okay. And in terms of safety and comfort, when you're blocked moving forward because you're feeling unsafe, what's that first emotion that you need to engage with? Jamie pop quiz. Okay. Fear. Nope. Of fear of failure. Nope. That's, that's the result of it. But when you have that fear of failure, how do you resolve it? I have the fear of failure. What's the emotion that you, you kick into? Um, Dwayne. I hate emotion. <laughs> I know, but you're going to have to learn it because there are, I mean. Give me an emotion. <laughs> the the, the um, whole thing here, back in the day uh, when um, Star Wars first came out, back in the late 70s, I think it was 1970-ish, 78, 76, whatever it was. Long time ago, yeah. Long time ago, maybe 80s. Um, no. I, I think it was the seventies too. Mm -hmm. Um, I wound up idolizing Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi. They were the two coolest dudes in the universe as far as I was concerned and they're fictional characters. Yeah. Yoda. But, but the, in the first Star Wars, so Star Wars 4, uh, which was the first one released, mm -hmm. um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, um, uh, Tatooine, or one of the planets just got blown up as a test for the, um, by the Death Star. And 
and the Princess Leia was put in prison and her planet, she gave the, the planet of where to go. And um, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi felt a shift in the force. And they're on, you know, um, they're flying uh, home, uh, going at light speed, and, and yet still somehow Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, does that. The scene is where Luke is using his lightsaber, deflecting, you know, practice, a practice droid, uh, you know, little shots, laser shots at him, and uh, deflecting those things. And then um, he gives Luke a blast shield, which is a metal shield that he can't see through. And he says, feel the force, Luke. Feel the force. Reach out with your mind. Reach out with your feelings and feel the force. The reality of the situation is when you can start reaching out with your emotions and connect to where other people are, the credibility that you have when you can start describing how they might possibly feel in that area of their life is earth shattering to them. It's mind blowing because that shift in the force, the force here is that emotional center. And we need to, in mind model coach training, is balance the intellect with the emotion, not have one totally dominate the other. And unfortunately, what we have is we frequently have scenarios where we suppress one area of our life to let the other one take over. And in this world, it's usually we suppress our emotion and, you know, keep everything very much up in the head. But the power comes from being flexible and going between the two. And that's where the power is, when we can align our emotion with our conscious thought and having those two in a unified balance um, more harmony than anything else we have an authentic self we don't come across as fake or phony we don't come across as trying too hard we just come across as oh that's that person that's Blair that's Jamie yeah real in short and authentic and that's what people are buying these days are, they want some, they're done with like all the hype of the supercar this and, you know, great big house that and everything else. Even those people out there who have those are not using them because of those props because those props are not working anymore. Right. That's we right. want to have real people with real problems relating real effective ways to overcome that problem and get resourceful so that I can change my life. They're not even looking for solutions anymore. They're looking for effective ways. And mind models are ways, are paths to follow, not an answer. It's a practice. It's a way of being. Emotions are part of that because that level of alignment is really a big deal. Anyway, um, yeah, so for you, Jamie, strongly suggest two things. If you haven't done so already, get rewiring your mind for wealth right. um, and jump into that because that's a big deal. And um, totally, totally uh, love that idea. And hey, Brandy, glad that you're on. I just see that she's back again. So, and she just went, hey, guys. And she's here. But the point being is that when we start aligning the head and heart, we start having influence almost effortlessly over people around us because they see us as credible. They feel us as credible. They don't second guess us. And that's because when we screw up, we also see people will see that we're screwing up because we become more transparent to people around us, which can be a little scary, but at the end of the day, it's a lot safer. You know, it's a lot more comfortable. Okay, John, um, I'm coming back to you in a minute, Jamie, or maybe I should finish okay. with you and then go to John. But uh, Jamie, how is this part wrapping up for you here? 
it's awesome because as hard as it is to hear some things, you know, it really is what I'm looking for. And it's what I've been, my journey's been a lot ever since, you know, I have had to be off for a little bit. Yep. And so that's one thing that I've been working on. And it's good to kind of get that confirmation <laughs> that I'm in going in the right direction with some extra steps. So, um, yeah, nine, it was great. Thank Super. You. John, you turned to Connie when I was talking about the blend of the heart and the head and everything else. What was that? Yes, What's I up? That. Yeah. Blair, that takes me back to when Connie and I met. Um, we, we were in a kind of a self-development program, and, and part of that had to do with the understanding that we, we live in two worlds at one time. So we have, we have the intellect and we have our heart, the feelings and they need to be balanced. So a thought for every feeling and a feeling for every thought. And that was, you know, just like um, the, the, a very basic level. So finding mind models and hearing you talk about this is very affirming. Uh, and and uh, it's kind of closing the circle that's been open for a long time. Cool. One of the things that you're going to find when you eventually do take question concepts one of the things that I um, did, I didn't prophesize, I made a prediction, and this is like 35 plus years ago, I predicted, and it's been proven by science, but this is a good 15 years before science had that technology to actually prove this, um, is that there is no way in a normal brain, so nothing that's been brain damaged or severed by operation or accident, there is no way for the brain to um, not have feelings and emotions firing off simultaneously on everything that goes through your brain. There's all, there is no purely logical thought you can have and there is no purely emotional thought you can have. So um, the, the example that I gave was one plus one equals two has cognitive logic and emotion firing off simultaneously. And the scientific study that used exactly the same thing, one plus one equals two, is the same proof where they realized there was about a... Uh, a smallish tennis ball size, roughly a tennis ball size, um, large meatball size of firing off in the cognitive area of your brain and in your amygdala, your emotional center, there was a small um, pea size brain, but they'd both fire off and start um, so fast that their equipment and, and they their equipment was measuring in the milliseconds. They could not distinguish any differentiation in where those thoughts started. So other than these two areas of the brain fired off simultaneously, and which is amazing when you think about it. Mm -hmm. And that was the scientific proof to validate my hypothesis that there is no other way that the thoughts, all thoughts, I don't care what they are, have both an emotional, and a conscious part to it. It only determined which one's gonna be larger based on um, the question concept and whys will drive a larger why and less cognitive thinking and what's and how's and the rest of them tend to drive more of the conscious part and a smaller emotional part. But all of the question concepts have both emotions and uh, logic or information attached to them simultaneously. So I found that to be an interesting proof. Can I say something to them about this? I was getting the why, why and curiosity confused. Yep. Okay. And so are you cleared up with why and curiosity? I'm getting better. Okay. Okay. Is Not totally any, there yet. Are you, can you ask me a question around that? All right, what is the difference between why and curiosity? A huge, 
most people will can't easily get into a why state with being curious. Curiosity usually, not always, not exclusively, but the vast majority of the time when I studied this in depth, I'm, I'm about a 90, 95 percentile of people will go to information-based curiosity, not emotion-based curiosity. They'll go to information. Okay. Now, if they go, I'm curious about what motivated you, that's not a what, that's a why-based curiosity but it's technically not a curiosity. It's them digging and wanting to know why. They're just using the word curiosity to drive their thinking. So, because they're going after motivation. Motivation is mostly <laughs> why-based. Now, if you want to know, if you want to be curious about something, be curious about the purpose. Or be curious about what I'm feeling, not why I'm feeling it, but what I'm feeling and name and label that. And what does that emotion cause me to want to do? Because if that gets me angry and wanting to attack, then I've used it as a disguised why. But if it gets me curious into going after clarifying the situation, seeking understanding or wanting to understand the other person's scenario, that's what, not why. Okay. So to so like confirm, so if, hold on, I wrote a note. So if you're curious, if, you're, if your feeling makes, drives your emotion to anger or something like that, then you're, that's causing the why versus yes. the what? Yes. And if you're curious on how the other person feels and are trying to get empathy, no, 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 no. Uh, okay. How you said feels and whatnot. Uh -huh. If you're curious to how other people feel, the way that you expressed feel, you expressed it with so much feeling that you're actually going to disguise, even though you want to know what, you're going to disguise a why response more probably. Okay. Out of the majority of people. Got but it. if I asked it, so what are you feeling? And then I'd listen. So okay. what are you feeling right now? Jamie, what are you feeling right now? That, oh, that, that feel, see, that feel word makes me crazy. Um, I am feeling. By the way, that's your why kicking in there. Because <laughs> you loaded the emotion first and then went into the information. Got it. Okay, I'm going to get this. I am, I'm practicing. Um, okay. The, I think I, hmm, feel, what do I, I got to find my sheet. That's what I got to find. Yeah, exactly. I will send copies. Um, <laughs> in case oh. anybody's not admitting they're as bad at this as me. See, um, I am feeling, 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 um, is okay. Would be afraid to be embarrassed or humiliated or any of those? Is that a feeling? Uh, you phrased it as would be. So now you've sidestepped that. So <laughs> what are you feeling, not what would you be feeling? Say that again? You sidestepped your feeling by saying would be feeling so that you can now uh, remove the feeling from yourself and talk about it in almost like in a disassociated state. I'm just so good at this. <laughs> you are so good at that. It, it takes years, decades of practice to get that good. Decades, and I have <laughs> it, 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 it really does. <laughs> yeah. How, it doesn't take decades to get out of it. That's no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. That's, I don't that's have that sure. many left. <laughs> no, that's okay. No, but one of the things that I um, an exam. Um, an exercise I would give my coaches is when you're driving down the road, um, at, especially at night or sometime when you're by yourself, just notice every light post, okay? okay. And every time you pass a light post, describe if, what you're feeling. 
And that teaches you to shrink down and to notice the little differentiations and practice that. And that means you have to them. know a bunch of feelings. Okay. Yeah, you do. And one of the other exercises I have uh, for you upcoming coaches, mind model coaches, are um, an exercise of writing 500 negative feeling words and 500 positive feeling words. You can oh, say I bet with that code 100. <laughs> yeah. You can no, say no, no. before five, the tip five, that you're getting. Five. 500. Oh, crap. I didn't think 500 existed. <laughs> no, no. There are way more than 500. But, uh, you know, and it's, it's words and phrases that are there that you can put together. So 500 positive feeling words, 500 negative feeling words. Now, you can wait for the, um, us to come along and do that in the, the, the group Start while we're... Start now. Yeah, right. Start now. But there are more than 500, so not to worry. Wow. And when if you were in my coach training program back in the day, you had two hours to do it in. And, you, and nobody left the room. And now one group was divided up. You only had to come up with 500. So one group would brainstorm uh, positive, one would brainstorm negative. You have two hours and 500 words. And then when I got really pissed off, it was an hour. Get it done. <laughs> okay, so that was that was back. I the <laughs> oh. You're welcome. Glad I could help, guys. Yeah, it's most true. of them, most groups actually got it done in the time allotted. So it wasn't. It's not an impossible task. It's a difficult task, not an impossible task. I would say that is though, as far as anything, because I've always been successful, I've always done, but that has been my biggest. Um, Your Achilles heel. Achilles heel is, fe yeah. is feeling right. Yeah. yeah. So I will work on that. Even if I can't come to the training, I'm yeah, going to work please. on the 500, 500, and then the light pole. Well, I don't have a car right now. So I'll do it um, while walking. <laughs> so every 10 steps. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I'll practice. Yeah. Because you can actually notice the movement in yourself, in, in your emotions, sort of becoming aware of that. And as you become aware of that, it starts giving you a sensation that you can then connect to other people and literally what you're going to be doing from a neurophysiological point of view you are literally going to be working the mirror neurons in your brain and the mirror neurons in your brain is you're going to be able to start seeing these emotions that you've been naming and labeling inside yourself on other people around you mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to put the word that you've practiced and you've named and labeled on yourself and you can give high probability guesses to how that other person feels just by how they look on the look on their face, what's going on on their face. Yeah, this is going to be interesting because I can't even fathom doing that in 20 steps, more or less a bunch of 10 steps. So I'm excited, though, because I really want to do this. So thank you. Yeah. So keep on putting it on. And practice, practice, practice. And I'm sure that you will bring me back on here. And <laughs> there you go. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, Brent. Uh, well, actually, uh, let's finish with John and Connie. So anything else? Uh, John, Connie, um, what worked for you tonight? Well, clarifying for me, the, the why, you know, getting that confused, um, which has been a long, long standing um, habit. And uh, so clarifying that, that's re that really helped. Super, great. One to 10? About, about, an, about an eight and a half. Cool. John? Uh, the connection between remembering and reliving and the comfort versus safety, that, that was very cool. Uh, mm -hmm. that worked for sure. Then, like, that's such a big deal with most people it really it, it's cool it's cool and, and then uh, there was, goes i just want to say hey sarah lynn thanks so much for being on tonight i just super appreciate you reaching out and being here just wanted to say hi to her 
before she takes off because had such a good uh, profiling session with her. Yeah, anyway, it was a good one. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, John. Uh, the the other thing was kind of a, an aha moment uh, in there, and I'm not sure I can fully put it in words, but it, in the discussion, it, it seemed that in dealing with emotions, uh, our default as a culture tends to be that you were talking about pushing through. I, I saw that as exercising willpower over trying to exercise willpower over our emotions instead of just kind of riding riding them and and feeling them and recognizing that they constantly change and flow like you're talking about. Otherwise you couldn't evaluate them every light post. Absolutely. Sarah, uh, Sarah Lynn, your hand is up. Um, can you just type in the text? Yes. If you want to be promoted on here, um, because I don't I like that's sort of the signal here. If you know that um, is you can jump on as a panelist. I don't mind doing that. And yes. Okay. I am promoting you to panelists. Something to say. Yes, she does. She has something to say. So, hey, how are you doing, Sir Lynn? Uh, I think you're going to have to flip it the other way around. She's Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Super. And you got to get your mic going. For some reason, you aren't muted, but your mic isn't picking you up effectively. Are Hello. you... Oh, there nope. we are. Yeah, there we are. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. No worries. So, John, uh, anything else there? That's it. Okay, cool. Um, solid nine. Solid nine. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Lynn. Yes. So, you had something to say. You were... You had your um, Sorry, you did... I. <laughs> I it's been kind of a crazy evening and you had acknowledged that I was on here so I just wanted to say thanks for letting me be on here so our, our I, pleasure that's what we're here to do <laughs> is to try and get everybody who possibly wants to be on as a panelist on as a panelist and share and talk and and engage with us so that's what we do yeah. so next time just put your hand up sooner and I'll yeah. uh, get you on here so that you can... yeah definitely next time hopefully next week I won't have any plans <laughs> oh right that reminds me next driving. week sorry I apologize <laughs> but next week I won't be here I will be in Orlando uh, <laughs> doing training okay. with one of our um, clients. No worries. <laughs> uh, actually, almost everybody here is connected in some way to EMP. So I'll be doing some training with EMP. Oh, well, that's great then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's cool. Brent, what worked for you tonight? Uh, you know, you can hear me. All right. yeah. What worked for me was the... Um, the logical versus the emotion, like that was that was something that I recognized, and I was thinking about the same thing. You're talking about the one plus one equals two, and I was thinking, well, of course you would have emotions attached to that, and thinking, what would those be? Like, oh, I'm, you know, at first, like I'm kind of, you know, maybe a little, you know, I'm trying to understand, like, oh, am I going to get this right? Am I going to get this wrong? And then, oh, I get the answer right. Now I'm excited, you know, as soon as you get it right. So you got some emotion with that. Numbers. Yep. That, was, that was interesting. Actually, they went with people that were a little less, a little more intellectual, and they yeah. still found that because somebody who said, no, I'm very logical, and they mm -hmm. went with, they actually divided the groups up into people that saw themselves as being a very logical person and another group that saw themselves as being highly emotional, and they um, ran the same battery of of questions on both groups yeah. and the reality was they found very little difference in how the brain reacted a broad difference in answers mm -hmm. but how the brain fired off not that not that different yeah because it seems pretty simple as soon as you if you're like well if i get it wrong there's a feeling attached if they get it right you're like and you if you know if you know if you did if you got it wrong or right then there's the emotion that attached to that absolutely that simple. and uh there was one other Oh, you talking about, I was, Jamie was saying the emotions, labeling your feelings. Uh, yeah, I, had, I struggled with that too, but I also was thinking there are words that I, I didn't, um, wouldn't think of labeling as feelings. 
like using words and, and know what they have, like the word strong, uh, maybe not my first thing to say, oh, I feel strong. I wouldn't, that wouldn't even pop into my mind. You know, I associate it with just physical, physical feelings or, or, or that not, not a, not a feeling like I just feel that way. Like, oh, I'm, I'm strong. I wouldn't say I feel strong. But you can't say I think strong. Right. It doesn't make sense. So that's how you can test out. Okay. okay. Or not. Okay. That's, that, oh, that works too. I didn't know that. So thank okay, you. Okay. Yeah. Say that. So if you can, so when I'm doing my little walk. If you say, I think, you know, you can test for feeling words. Okay. Because the feeling word you can actually put is, I, you cannot use the word that. I feel that doesn't count. It has to be the, the word itself, I feel strong. Now you can check that out and put that into I think strong. Does that make sense? And the answer is no, it doesn't make sense, but I feel strong is that I feel hungry. I think hungry doesn't work. Okay. All right. Okay, so all of those things you can test for feeling words. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, you can also say things like, I feel math. It's sort of there and it sort of isn't there. That's sort of like, I feel math. Um, doesn't quite work, but some people can feel math. It's sort of like it's sort of like fuzzy in my yeah. head, but it's not. And some people it just does not compute. I feel math, but for some people they can feel math. But if you say I feel music, or I think music, it's stronger with I feel music than I think music. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because music is a way of expressing emotion, you know. Cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, that um, helps. Thanks. No yeah. worries, Sarah Lynn. So, what worked for you tonight? You were on for a chunk of time. Um. So, what worked for me? <laughs> well, quite honestly, I'm just trying to sort through all of this. <laughs> as I'm like diving into your course and tuning into whatever I can, yep. I, I, quite honestly, I feel sort of scrambled. So I'm just trying to sort through it. And I don't know if that's just kind of a part of the process or what. So, so what do you know. think that it is? What does it feel like? Does it feel like it's part of the process or are you owning scrambled? I think it's a part of the process because... Absolutely true. I just want to interrupt okay. right there. You're, <laughs> you nailed the feeling absolutely correct because there isn't one person on here that hasn't had that scrambled brain feeling. Okay, good. Because okay. <laughs> I think, um, I can't exactly remember when, but there was a moment when, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember names, when um, Jamie was talking and she was talking about feeling flushed. And for some reason, I started feeling like I was about to cry. And I'm like, why? It's, <laughs> it's just, it's been, I, I feel like my emotions are kind of all over the place. My um, thoughts are all over the place. So it's very, it's been very interesting. But I know it's kind of like, it comes with that whole safety versus comfort and being uncomfortable. And being, in, being uncomfortable because I don't really know what to expect. So that kind of helped reassure me a little bit today. Because today I've been feeling just in general lost with all of this. And right. so kind of having that reminder kind of helped me bring myself back to the present and kind of like calm me down a little bit. So, that so what did helped. you just do? What did you just do? Because right. <laughs> you used one of the mind models right there and I don't even know if you know what you did. But you did it highly but it's part, <laughs> part of safety versus comfort, but something else on top of that. Uh, bringing myself into the present. Yes, you brought yourself into yeah. the now. Doing what? Um, by oh gosh. <laughs> okay, let me just ask. Breathing exercise is one well, of the things. <laughs> pardon me. What was that, Jamie? The five magic words. No, um, that, that's not where I'll go because I don't think she's got it. Well, I want to keep it simpler. 
So were you judging yourself or were you evaluating yourself? Evaluating myself. Exactly. You were totally evaluating. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yep. And that's, so, that's what we need to do. We need to pardon I will say, practice. I will say also, Sarah Lynn, that for me, because I don't like not knowing, um, <laughs> it, I took a step of faith when I raised my hand early on when you first started doing this um, mm -hmm. to get on the panel because that was very uncomfortable for me because I knew I would sit on the hot seat and I don't like being tested or being on a hot seat. So I put myself in a very uncomfortable place on purpose to learn. Yeah. Um, but it, so if you can get on the panel, I highly, I think everybody on the panel would tell you the same thing, but I know I did it and it went against everything my body and mind was telling me to do. So that's funny. It's funny that you say that because actually that, that was exactly what I was battling before. Cause I, although I did have, like I had to go out for a dinner today and I was driving, but for a while I was just listening because I'm like, I don't want to bother anybody. I don't want to be put in the hot seat. I don't know if I'm ready for this, but I'm like, if I don't do it, I'm never going to get on here. Yeah. <laughs> so, Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, really well done. Rebecca, Thanks. Tim. Yeah. Applause all the way around. Definitely. Yeah, totally. Thank you. Totally, totally, totally. And he's an equal opportunity hot seat person, by the way. <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, because Prince has been on there. Well, everybody's been on there. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even ask. I think last week it was just, hey, okay. <laughs> start with you. And then, oh, okay. Yep. And it, and it was the whole show. That was it. Yeah. And we he was so fast afterward at putting you there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear, Brent, that you got it pretty badly last week. <laughs> in a good way, I hope. Yeah, yeah, no, it, 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 no. You got it bad in a good way. The good kind of. Oh way. yeah. <laughs> got it real bad, real bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. super. So one to ten for you. Uh, well, it helped me kind of, uh, kind of get back on a narrow path again. So I would have to say probably like a nine to ten. So that wow. really helped. Awesome. So. I was feeling all over the place today, so it was good. Good, good, good. So um, focusing in, jump into the self-evaluation piece a little sooner. And when you get that sensation that you're drifting out, you mm -hmm. know, so what might I do differently right now? And one of the other things is, that's what, what I might I get curious about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... um. Yeah, I think part of it is also just that there's so many different mind models to keep in the back of my mind to use. <laughs> I think that's, that's how I'm on these calls. I'm keeping it down to a, a small chunk. You know, okay. like you know, I've done quite a quite a few weeks of these, 33, 34 weeks of these now, and mm -hmm. uh, they're all there. But I'm going more or less through the same ones, but in a different way. So that's really yeah. what we're working on and, and so that we don't do too much of a deep dive on, well, on overwhelming people with all the mind models that are there. Well, it's not even from that. It's just like, cause I'm diving into your course. Oh, and that's so, a good place. Yes. <laughs> so that's where I'm like, just kind of feeling overwhelmed. So this morning I was like, kind of going back to when you profiled me to kind of take a look at the ones that you mentioned. So I could maybe potentially start there and focus on them. Um, Great place. So that's kind of like I was working on the whole naming and labeling, which I'm still kind of struggling, but it actually helped what you said with Jamie and uh, just like with the technique where like I think versus I feel. That's brilliant. <laughs> that's, that's just brilliant. And so that alone can help a lot yep. with just what's going on. So I really appreciate that little technique or strategy. So thank you. No no worries. Cool. Thank you. And uh, Tim and or Rebecca, if she's probably off taking care of the kids. So uh, Tim, if you want to jump on here and wrap up for you and Rebecca. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Our, our kids are freaking out. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I sort of figured. No, I know, I know that Rebecca had something she wanted to affect. Here she is. She oh, okay. Good. To... Go ahead. Well, just um, everything that we talked about tonight, actually closed probably like four or five loops that I've been having for years. 
that I thought that I know, knew and recognized, but like actually being able to label the pieces of um, projection in the past or the future, worrying about that, keeping myself in the state and um, <clears throat> the uh, reliving versus remembering piece of it that's all rolled up in that. So Jamie, thank you for, for sharing because I identified a ton with what you were sharing and was able to identify in my own mind some things that had been kind of rolling around loose without, you know, the tidy little bow on them that now make a lot more sense in my own super. head. So. Super, super. <clears throat> nine well, for me. Nine for you. Awesome. Tim? Uh, for me, it was also the, uh, the tying the remembering versus reliving to the safety versus comfort. That yep. piece, that, that tying those together, and that was a huge light bulb moment for me. Um, and then also the other thing uh, for me, just going back to kind of the basics and what John said earlier, the reason I, you know, high-fived it so much is, is just the process. Because for me, and what I, when we started off the call and uh, <laughs> the scatter brain that I had going on that I was trying to clarify, uh, John basically summed it up. I mean, that was that piece of getting curious and then, you know, asking myself, you know, is this making me feel uncomfortable or is it unsafe? You know, and, and walking through the questioning process and, and getting curious, that was the piece that I was missing before that once I learned was just huge, that, that shift for me in being able to, uh, it, it changed everything for me. I mean, I can relate to what the girls were talking about just a minute ago, Sarah Lynn and Jamie about, you know, getting on the panel, because this is something that I never would have done <laughs> because I was so worried about, you know, what everybody would, you know, think of me, judging. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know, that, that judgment piece. If I get on, you know, am I going to say something that is just stupid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stupid. Or am I going to look dumb or wrong or, you know, all those judgment words. And I was so, paralyzed to actually get on the panel at first yeah. and it got to the point where I eventually just said you know once once I kind of got through the mind models a little bit and I realized that it's not everybody else necessarily judging it's it's in my own head it's that you know that that judgment in, my, in myself and getting past that working through the questioning and getting curious and and realizing that everybody else is feeling the same way <laughs> Yeah. you know when they get on so um anyway just just some of these naming labeling of feelings and you know recognizing judgment and using evaluation and just all of those different pieces of the mind models once i got those and was able to uh sort it out in my mind then i could finally be able to move and it was just it was huge for me so Anyway, just just going back to the basics of, you know, getting curious, asking the questions and moving through whatever I'm stuck on just is has been a huge piece for me. So mm -hmm. anyway, uh, I'm going to go nine as well tonight. Awesome. Awesome. Very, very cool. Dwayne, did you go? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. I just I, I wanted to double check. So um Jamie's getting some cat love there, so that's pretty Lots cool. Lots of snack. Oh. In a second, he's going to start biting on my hair and doing this. Ah, interesting. Cool. Well, I won't keep you guys any longer, so because we've done an hour and 40 here tonight, so uh, it's not my uh, frequent two-plus hours, so it's, it's shut, uh, shut down a little sooner. But anyway, hey, Sarah Lynn, thanks so much for taking the risk and jumping on. Uh, super appreciated. Brent, glad to see you again, sir. Everybody, Tim, uh, John, Rebecca, uh, Dwayne, thank you for coming on. Jamie, as always, it's great having you. Uh, hey, Sherry, thanks so much for getting on here. Brandy, um, thanks so much as well. And uh, Chris, um, thank you for jumping on here as well. Uh, there's so many great people and great opportunities. Thanks for coming on to everybody. And um, we are likely going to be moving the um, when I get back in a week. So first things first, we've got a few pre-recorded episodes during the uh, 1130 Mountain time slot. 
uh, for rewiring the mind. We're going to be doing that and um, moving things forward with that. So the coaching and profiling sessions will be minimal this week and no, um, no, the Blair Dunkley experience Tuesday evening one this coming week. We'll be back a week afterwards though. So that's, that's the next major piece. Okie dokie. Well, you guys have a great night and I'll see you guys for sure in two weeks and go give that cat some love and some food. Yeah. So he's 20 pounds. You listen to him. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Take care guys. Bye for now. Bye-bye.